Spring training is good. I, I mean, every day we're coming in pretty early, uh, getting our work in. But it, being around some of these guys, it's you know, it's a lifelong experience, and uh, the knowledge they all have is something that you know I'll never forget with my experience in this game. And who are you meeting? Uh, who are some players that you're honestly you everyone, uh, ranging from David Price, Mookie to Clayton Kershaw and Walker, like everyone, uh, just because you know they're all around. So I just want to introduce myself and make sure that they know who I am and they're guys I can rely on down the road. Do they know who you are before you even introduce them? Uh, some of them do, but some of them don't, and I don't. I don't really care if they do or don't. But uh, I just want to, you know, introduce myself and go from there. You don't walk around with your in my little. Hell no. <laughs> what have you learned from watching that? Um, yeah, I think growing up. I watched Clayton Kershaw. We all watched Clayton Kershaw and uh, how good he was in, in his in his prime years. Uh, and now watching him now, he's still like a really good pitcher, uh, but he's refining some things. And I think watching his transformation is really interesting to see how he still continues to get outs. And also with guys like Dustin May and Walker Buehler, those are guys that are emerging aces for the team. So they also have like an interesting journey and a story that you can always pick parts of but also yesterday I talked to Blake Trinan a little bit basically about just how he came up and you know he's been with three organizations so far so how he's adjusted and what he's like between each organization and how he's felt in each clubhouse and I thought that was a really interesting conversation to have with a guy like him who has mm -hmm. premier stuff at the back end of a bullpen. So what kind of advice like what's that piece of advice that he was asking or he was letting you know about? Well, he, he mostly talked about uh, the aspect of the clubhouse and the training staff more so what clubhouses were more inviting with veteran guys and in integrating younger guys and the training staff, you know, being bought in for you all 162 games, not just when you're hurt, come see us. Uh, I thought that was really interesting that he said that. It's something I never thought about. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything, everything surrounded about um, around those things. So, um, oh, in terms of routine, mm -hmm. have you picked up any tidbits of information? Like, what was your routine before yeah. uh, starts? And then, what have you watched and learned from some of the other players here that you're trying to integrate into your system? Honestly, I haven't learned much about routine yet mm -hmm. yeah, uh, from these guys since it's so early. Mm -hmm. uh, some guys are making you know, the shorter starts. But my routine always was get to the ballpark relatively early, uh, you know, kind of like log down my my notes or my thoughts for the day, um, how I want to go about attacking hitters, um, and then just honestly roaming around that day, eating a little bit, getting into the weight room early to prep and get ready for my start, um, and things like that. Listening to music, mm -hmm. scrolling on Twitter a little bit, yeah. uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I'm a guy who goes like hot tub or anything like that. I would say I keep it as simple Do you avoid as possible. People? <laughs> Do you avoid people? Do you? Not really. I, I would say I interact a little bit, uh -huh. but definitely when it's time to uh, like lock in, I lock in. And something I actually did last year um, to the later half of the year in Tulsa, I would just go outside and watch the hitters hit BP because I'd be in the stands, I'd be by myself, listening to music, just thinking about what I'm going to do that night. And uh, I think that helped me out a lot. And it would get me into the sun uh, really early. So when it's you know hot later yeah. in the day, my body isn't like trying to adjust because right. it's the first time seeing sun all day. Um, and just just like letting rolling with that really. So what's a, do you have a superstitions, pregame meals that you have to eat, like anything like that? No, I would say the superstitions are pretty normal to the point where it's like, just wear the same cleats or wear my pants the same way or wear the wear the same socks or undershirt mm -hmm. like things like that uh, nothing too uh, extreme like I have to do this or I have to eat that you know I just eat whatever they have at the ballpark and uh, go from there and you know just just try to keep it like I said simple as possible yeah I would say my favorite artist is Travis Scott uh, I've listened to him since I was in high school uh, I found out about him in high school, and obviously he's a, a premier artist now. So it's kind of it's kind of cool to watch yeah. his music grow and the fan base grow. And also, I'm I'm big into guys like uh, Meek Mill. I'm big into rap. Mm -hmm. So most rappers, I'm, I'm enjoying Meek Mill. Um, you have Game Day. 
like a special game day playlist? Or I don't have a like special game day playlist, but mm -hmm. I, I normally just shuffle okay. uh, whatever I have, shuffle all of my songs. Uh, if I'm really in a mood for something, then I'll click that certain album or I have a couple playlists or a certain playlist. Okay. Uh, but I'm never too like choosy about that. I you know whatever sounds good that day, I right. listen to. You gotta get your playlist up on Spotify. Yeah. Share. <laughs> <laughs> um, my family, uh, without a doubt. Um, my mom, dad, and uh, two brothers. My dad was the one who uh, put us in baseball, and at a young age, I just adapted to baseball, so I played t-ball. And then, honestly, from the ages up, I would just, this was the game I loved. And uh, me and my brothers, we'd always be in the backyard playing wiffle ball or baseball, or whatever it might be. And I think my love for the game started when I was that young, at six, five, six years old, whatever it was. And now, when I'm 22, you know, I still have that same love for the game, which is rare, I would say because uh, I think people lose the love of the game because of how monotonous and how, how slow baseball can be. But I think I just enjoy every part of baseball. So I would say my parents uh, were the biggest influence and my family was the biggest influence. And then on the field, honestly, just teammates and everyone who I played with and practiced with that, we all competed to get better every day, whether it be <clears throat> hitting, fielding, pitching. We were always out there you know, summer nights or winter, winter afternoons, whatever it may be, in the not the best conditions because we're in New York. Uh, we're always working to get better. So I think that instilled that kind of like grind to want to, you know, become y your best self at the end of the day. And I think that's the love and that's the passion that still grinds for me today because I know I'm not the best player I can be yet. But that grind and that journey towards being the best player is something that I, you know, I wake up for every day. You're, you just cracked the top 100 for top prospects, yeah. you know, and how, how's that feel? When did you find out yesterday? Uh, I saw it on Twitter uh, briefly in the morning when I, before I got to the ballpark, but honestly, I didn't really like think much into it. I, I know uh, a lot of those publications think really highly of me, mm -hmm. and I think highly of myself, but at the end of the day, you know, I want to just go out there and make quality starts and be a good teammate for the guys, right. whether it be top 100 or top 30 or whatever it may be, last guy on the 40-man roster. I just want to go out there and make my stamp that I can get the job done no matter what, if I'm a prospect or not, and have that be my um, story that follows me instead of, you know, the, the top prospect guy who, mm -hmm. you know, thinks thinks the world of himself and, you know, doesn't think about anyone else around him. Right. So seeing um, Tony and... Dustin pitch right now, and they're they're doing really well. I mean, they honestly, arguably, would be starting on other major league teams right now. Mm -hmm. But with the depth of how this Dodger, the depth of this Dodgers rotation right now, it looks like they might start in, you know, in, in Triple A. You mm -hmm. know, just to begin the season, maybe. So, how does that feel as someone coming up? You know, not behind them, but like coming up. You know, after them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Where are you, are you going to be ready for whatever they ask for in terms of like? relief pitching and then maybe trickling you for a little bit of starting and then seeing like how they're growing in this organization yeah. you're gonna have to have a lot of patience like Absolutely. what have what have you been doing to prepare for that I think uh, doing what or seeing what Dustin and Tony are doing and what they're going to do in the future is something that a lot of guys will see and I think they do a great job with it whether they're in AAA or in the big leagues, they're gonna get the job done every fifth day no matter what. Mm -hmm. And I think they're two guys that us younger guys can look up to because you know they have the stuff, they have the attitude, they have everything that you want in a big league pitcher and also a teammate. And they are first class uh, teammates in the way they handle things. So seeing that and having those kind of guys to look up to, uh, being so similar in age kind of, it, it kind of makes me understand the process that I might have to go through, but also knowing that no matter what, if I'm ready, the organization will know I'm ready, and they'll get me up there and give me the opportunity that I'm looking for. Okay. And whether that opportunity be starting, reliefing, uh, relief pitching, whatever, and I'm, I'm ready for it, and I know I'll be ready for it whenever my name's called. Best uh, favorite Netflix movies or Netflix shows on <laughs> right now? So I'm currently watching you, but I would say my favorite, Ozark or Sons of Anarchy when it was on Netflix. Uh, back, that was like when I was in high school. 
but I uh, binge watched that on Netflix and before they took it off and that show like that was like one of the first shows I like binge watched and keeps you up at night. Yeah, it was like oh my goodness, like everything going on. It was it was a really good show. I'm I'm sad it went off. Favorite movies, top five. Ooh, top five. Okay, uh, Dark Knight movie life which is uh martin lawrence eddie murphy if you have a chance check that out okay. anyone actually this won't be in order number three i'll go with sandlot number four actually parasite which i just saw which was great uh that's a good uh mention right there number five i think get out the uh the jordan peele movie was like oh. really really good so those are the first five to come to mind probably okay. my top five yeah are you a big movie watch on the road yeah i like to watch movies um in the theater or in the hotel room both, I would say more so in the theaters, because uh, I find myself, it's really hard for me to just sit there and watch a movie on my laptop, because I always scroll on Twitter and Instagram or stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I like just going to the movies uh, and, you know, just enjoying the movie for the two hours, because, you know, it kind of puts me in that zone. Uh, and that's like one of my hobbies, just going to movies, seeing what I, what's new out there. Uh, we had a little thing going on, I don't know if you saw it on Twitter, like, what type of wing eater are you? Definitely four. You're a four. Yeah. Okay. You got to get all the meat, and okay. you gotta you gotta enjoy the wing. Definitely <laughs> four. Josiah Gray, nicknames Jojo. If you guys ever hear that, uh, Twitter account's gonna be at J Gray. My Instagram's also gonna be uh, Jojo J O J O underscore Gray twenty one. Shoot me a follow whenever, and uh, I say I appreciate you guys. Uh, go Dodgers, and hope to be repping that blue pretty soon in L A.